We'll be in the book of James. But I thank God for saving my soul. There ain't not one person can say it enough. You could say it a million times in one day and it still wouldn't be enough. I hope I can get this out the way that it kind of got in this head. Sometimes getting it out of this head into this mic is a bit of a chore sometimes. But we'll be in the book of James chapter 3. It's called Eight Characteristics of Divine Wisdom. Nikki said, I guess kind of, I didn't tell her what was going on, but I said, do you know what they are? She said, why, they're in the Bible? Uh, yeah, they're in the Bible. <laughs> James chapter 3, verse 17, it says, but the wisdom... That is from above is first pure. Pure is holy and clean, right? So to present this divine wisdom, we first got to be pure, holy, and clean. Amen? I'm going to take my time, so just bear with me. First is pure, then peaceable. Oh, that's a good one, ain't it? With all men, be peaceful with all men with holiness. We want to X out some of them, don't we? God, there's got to be a clause in there somewhere. There's got to be an escape clause in there. That I don't have to be that way toward everybody. You know, Lord, have you met everybody in this world? Sure he has. and created them. Amen. So, peaceable. And the next one is gentle. Amen. To be gentle. Gentle not only as touching, but gentle with your words. Gentle with your actions. Gentle with the way you handle even matters, even small things that you do in haste, step back, think about it, then handle it. I guarantee you, you know, there's a, there's a saying, before you spank your child, step back, count to ten, calm down, then go discipline your child. Amen, have we heard that one? I have. Because by the time you get to 10, if you count slow enough, you go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, whoop. No. Slow down. Count to 10. And then when you go to discipline that child, you would handle it a little differently. Because you're not as angry. Even if you had to walk out into another room, give yourself five minutes. Then go and deal with it. That's the gentleness that we got to have towards some people. It takes that, well, wait a minute, Lord, let me walk out this door and walk back in it. Or let me go to the restroom, and then I'll come back and I'll deal with them. If you need that little space, but when you deal with them, deal with them with, with gentle. Be gentle with them. Because you can, if you're not being a peaceful and using it, gentleness, you can shove them away. But let's go on a little further. Gentle and easy to <clears throat> and easy to be entreated. Entreated. Not stubborn. Yeah, that's a good one, ain't it? But yield to others. Don't be so stubborn that you say, I will not do that. I will not help that person again. I will not lift my hands. To do it. I've done done it ten times and I'm not doing it again. Oh. And stubborn, you're going to do it your way regardless. Jennifer could stand up here and scream to the top of her lungs. 
But when you got a stubbornness in your mind and you're set to do it, you're going to do it. But no, you got to remember, we can't do these. We got to turn from these. We can't, we can't, we got to have these in our heart. We, you can't be stubborn. You got, you got to be gentle. Gentle is the, is the opposite of being stubbornness, right? All right, let's go a little further. I don't mean to bore nobody. I'm just trying to get this out. Full of mercy. Whoa. Full of mercy. Always forgiving. That's a tough one. Always forgiving and performing acts of kindness. Acts of kindness to who? To those who do good to you? The ones that rub your skin the wrong way, you just got to open up kindness. You got to open up and say, love you, brother. Amen. Don't just say it, but get down on your knees and mean it. Because if you will work for this wisdom, because the Bible says to study to show yourself approved, not to show yourself smart. But he says to show yourself approved. I'm talking about a different kind of wisdom. Wisdom, when you think about it, you think, God, they're smart. But I'm talking about wisdom of God, wisdom that comes from him. You know, you can be none of these until he comes in. Amen. There is not one of these that I'm, that I'm reading that you could do in a sinful body. Not all the time. You might every now and then. But I guarantee you it won't last long because a sinful person does not want to be kind to those that do wrong to them. Their, their venue on that is an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. I will get you back one way or another. But see, we've we got to show it different kindness. No matter what they say, we've got to be full of kindness and forgiving. Forgiving is a big thing. Amen. I've, I've had to really ask the Lord to help me on, that, on, on a few things. But the thing of it is, is we can obtain every one of these if we want it. Amen. Okay, next one. Oh, this is a good one. Good fruits. Fruits of what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Ooh, temperance is a big one, ain't it? Hey, Amen. I can love, joy, peace. Boy, at temperance, though. Temperance. Boy, that's a, that can be a hard to bite off, ain't it? Full of good fruits. I want to always do good. Always be obedient. Always listening. Always being willing to say, God, I'm ready to do your will. I'm ready to help that drunkard. I'm ready to help that drug addict. I'm ready. Amen. And, uh... Full of mercy and good fruits, without um, what is that word? What partiality? Partiality, partiality. <laughs> having no respect to person, means I don't look to Nikki better than Cindy. I don't look to that to Cindy better than I do a drunk. Or I don't look to anyone better than anyone. I don't esteem no one better than no one else. Amen. I, ex I ex treat everyone the same. Amen. We all, as Christians, and even out in the world, we got to treat them. We got to treat them with, with the same respect. Because just think about it. You was there at one time. When you think that... This one's better because they serve the Lord than this one. It's not. They just know God. The other one is still lost. He's still, it's still a child of God. And I can't say, oh, I like you better. 
Well, how would I know? Because when they got saved, then I would like them. Is it taking them happen to be saved before I can like them? Jesus loves them even when they're like that. So shouldn't I not love them? And the next one is, this is a good one too. I, I found this in a little hard. And without hypocrisy, is that how you say it? Hypocrisy? Okay. Anyhow, it says to be open, honest, genuine, and true. But see, where do you got to start? Honest to yourself. Yourself. If I'm honest and I can't go out and say, I know everything in this book. No, I don't. I don't know probably a third of it because there's so much hidden things in it that I have not even skimmed. You can read it 500 times, but you'll never get all of it. So when I go out and I try to say, I know that word from front to back. I know everything about it. No, I don't. There's always something to learn. Amen. I cannot go out and say, yeah, I know all that. Be honest with myself. Be honest with myself and say, I'm still in kindergarten. Amen. I don't even know if I've even graduated to first grade yet. Because there's so much in here. There is so much in here. You can serve the Lord for 30 years and still open it up and find something new. Hey, man, I don't know about no one else, but I've been in for 29 years and I can open it up and think, God, where did that come from? It surely must just jumped in there. I've read that and read that and never did see it. They must have added that while I was asleep or something. Hey, man, I don't know about anyone else, but that's how it happens. Because you think, well, I've read Genesis 10 times. Read it the 11th time and find something new. Amen. There is something new in it. You can never know it all. And that's where you need to be open and honest with yourself, and then you will be honest to God. Hey, man, it don't matter if Jennifer thinks I know it all or not. It's him that matters. It's him the one I've got to be honest with. I mean, he already sees it. So why should I lie to him to try to please Jennifer? I can't. I've got to be honest. And I've got to be honest and true to him. Then, when we get all these working in us, my God, what, what, could, what could happen? Think about it. You're holy and you're clean. That's pure, right? Holy and clean of what? Of dirt? No. It's sin. Clean of the blood. The blood cleaning you. Amen. That is what clean is. It's not going over here and washing my hands in a, in a hole of water. But I'm cleaning, cleansing with the blood being applied. That's your first step. That's why pure was your first one. I love that because you've got to be clean first. I can't get enter into heaven dirty. I will not. You will not. I don't care what preacher tells you what. You will not. If you are not clean with the blood, I don't care who you are, you ain't going to make it. Amen. If I don't get the blood totally applied in my life, I don't care if I preach a million messages. It's not going to take me to heaven. Standing up here preaching is not going to take me to heaven. It's living this. It's applying this word into my life. That's going to take me. And it's the same with you all. We are no different. What he expects from me, he expects from you. Amen. Everybody tries to say, well, the preacher has to do it. And I don't have to live it. It's not true. It's not true. This word was not written just for preachers. Amen. It is written for us all. And this is what it's going to take to get into heaven. Because once you get that blood applied, now think about it, the night you got saved and that blood began to wash all your sins away, did you not get up peaceable? Did you not get up and have no enemies? 
Didn't you get up and, and just feel the love for everybody in the church and you didn't even know them? Hey Amen. See, that's what I'm saying. When you get one, the other one falls. When And it all starts with the washing of the blood. Next, gentle. You'll be just so gentle and kind. Have you ever heard someone walk up to you and just be, Becky Rao was one. She was just so kind and gentle. I don't think I ever heard her scream a harsh word. I mean, she might felt like it sometimes, but she bit her tongue. Why? Because she wanted heaven to be her home. She didn't want nothing to mess that bloodline up. She didn't want no undirtiness. Because once you get, when well, you go take a bath, do you want to go out and run a wall or in a mud hole? Not after you just had a good clean bath. I mean, before you took a bath, you might be, hey, yeah, let's go. But I've just had a shower, and I don't want to go through all that again. So we should be that way with Jesus. Once we got a hold of him, that should be enough. Like that song, Amy just sung. Just sung, sung, sung. <laughs> the song she just hung. Boy, it was here, Billy. <laughs> but Jesus is enough. He's all we need. Amen. The night that we got saved, that made us. We were easily entreated. We ain't so stubborn and had to be our way or no way. We're just so easy going. I don't know what you are, but that's what I felt the night I got up. I mean, if you said whatever, I'd be like, yeah, go for it. I, you know, I'm fine. Go for it. I didn't understand it, but I liked it. Because I liked how I felt. When you practice these, you'll like how you feel inside. You, and you can, you can, for months, and I mean months, all these were easy to do. It was so easy to do until I started opening these ears and listening to the devil that I let stubbornness come back in. Well, I'm going to take the stubs. If they won't do it my way and see it my way, I'm just going to take the stubs on. They will change eventually. Um, no, that ain't how it works. Amen. God's not going to change just because you, you're you being a little stubborn. Amen. And forgiven. That was easy, wasn't it? The night I rose up, I, I didn't have a grudge against no one. Hey, Amen. If I went down with one, I came up with none. The most peaceful feeling that we could ever feel was that night. Why do we want to let sin come in? Why do we let the devil rob us? Hey Amen. If I could stand and tell you how great it is, why do we let the devil so easily come in and rob us from it? You're agreeing with me. You all felt the same way, right? Exactly. Free. Free from what? All that. Amen. Then why do we not live it? Why do we not want to stay away from it? Why are we so easily entreated back to it? Why are we so easily to let the devil take us back? Why do we not stand and say, Hey, no. I remember that night I got up, and it feels far more better there than it did in that old world. Amen. Your worries don't seem the same. Amen. Your They don't seem the same no more. The aggravation and the torment that you once was you in, you're not in no more. Why do you want to put yourself back into that? Why do you want to go back into that? If you felt so free, and everyone in here, if I asked you to raise your hand, the night you got saved, did that not freedom come? Did you not feel as free as a bird? Could you not feel like you could just fly from one spot to another? Didn't have a care in the world. 
You wouldn't have cared if your eyes would have shut right then and never opened. Amen. But what about tonight? If I asked you and come around and said, would you be afraid to, if your eyes didn't open no more? Could you still freely say, I'm flying like a bird? Amen. If, if a, the fruit of the spirits is not abiding into your life, you're not free as a bird. You can say, don't judge me. I'm not judging you. I am not judging no one in this house. I'm simply telling you what the Word says. I'm simply telling you without the fruits of the Spirit abiding in your life and you working them fruits of that Spirit, you cannot tell me heaven's your home. You cannot tell me that you're flying as a bird right now if you ain't got love and joy. And I ain't talking about like joy like going off and ha 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 all the time. It's joy deep down inside. Amen. And peace. Oh, my Lord. Peace. That's a good one, ain't it? When you can sit in peace, things are going around you. Chaos, as that old song is. All the chaos going around. But you still have peace. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Whoa, faith's in there. Faith to believe that you don't need to be where you're at, that you can be changed. Faith to believe that God did not design you to live in that torment that you're living in. Faith to come on out of that. You're saying, what? Well, I didn't see Jesus sitting at the altar the night I came. Did you? Was he sitting there looking at you? These physical eyes, I didn't see them. But spiritually, yes. So see, I had to step out by faith and say, I, I know what I'm feeling. I know it ain't from man and it ain't from me. Whether no one else in this building is going to believe it or not, I'm believing you, Jesus. And therefore, I came and I prayed it wasn't here, but that's that faith. Faith in knowing that your father is bigger than any demon out there. That your faith, that you have faith to believe that your father can deliver you. Amen. Faith in believing. There was a song, I don't even know the name of it. I just heard, don't I love. Talking about building a boat in the desert. Even though it ain't rained, he said, I'll still build you a boat. That's the faith we're talking about. No matter if you feel like you've been on, on a desert sand for six months, you still know God's in control. No matter what comes or what goes, still know that he's in control. No matter if you're in the middle of that mountain and you don't feel like you can go no further, faith believing, I've got this because God has got me. I'm not doing it alone. See, that's where you need to come out is thinking it's you. It's no longer you. I can do nothing. But with my father, I can do it. It's not going to be easy sometimes. But we can do it. If we made our children's life so easy that they never had to lift a hand to do nothing, how miserable would they be when they got grown? They'd be very miserable because they'd be ignorant. They wouldn't know how to do anything. You know, you teach your kids. And that's the way God is with us. He teaches us. Wants us to be pure, peaceable, gentle. He wants us to show Him. See, all these things He showed you, Him, you, you, Him. How'd I get that? <laughs> Nikki's looking at you. She's like, you're confusing me. But this is what he is. So this is what I've got to be. Especially now more so ever. More now so ever. As we see darkness really falling. We've got to be this more now. When people get even more meaner than what they ever was. we got to be more loving. When they get more hateful. More 
just you don't want to be around them. We got to remember. Got to be kind. I am going to pray, and I am going to do what Jesus tells me. But, you know, Jesus didn't kick them away. I think about Matthew. I mean, that poor boy, he didn't know nothing but numbers. But Jesus loved him. When the rest of them, Simon and all the rest of them get a little aggravated at him, Jesus loved him. Amen. There is people that's going to aggravate us. There is people that is just going to get under our skin. But we still got to love them. We still got to say, hey, I know a man that can change you. Amen. We still got to love them and forgive them. You said, well, I can't forgive somebody that uses me on every time I turn around. Well, let me, let me, let's go back down this road. Before you got saved, how many times did you use the Lord on every whip stitch? And he still bidding, come, come. So you want to use that as, well, they're using me. Will we not use God when we were sinners? Did we not put him to the test at times? Did we not push him a little further than what we probably should have? But he still had a little bit of patience with us. Still had a little bit of patience with me. I don't know about you. I'm going to speak to me. Amen. With my ignorance. So therefore, when someone is being a little bit ignorant, i got to stand a little bit more patience. A little bit more kindness. A little bit more love. Amen. I always remember Diane would say, kill him with kindness. And I thought, <clears throat> I didn't like hearing that. I wanted you to say, get even. <laughs> but no, she'd say, kill them with kindness. And I'm like, kindness means you got to be around them. You got to wave at them. Or, you know, you, you, we want them people to like, oh. shut my eyes till they go by. Oh, I didn't see you. That's true. That my eyes, I didn't see him. Yeah, I did see him where I wouldn't have shut my eyes. Amen. So, what would you have done if Jesus done you like that? The night that you come and you prayed, he bidded you now. So, and then when you hit the altar, oh, I didn't see you come. Think about it. Do we do people that way? We should not. We got to show Jesus stronger now than ever. So therefore, I want these divine wisdom to begin to reign through me and out of me. Not stay in me, but reign out of me to where people can see and know who I serve. Amen. And not anything of me, but I want them to see clean. I want them. Have you ever drove past somebody's house and they wore a load of white clothes and they hang them out on the line and they're just so pretty and white? Hey, I mean, well, you don't see that that much anymore, but used to you did. Go in the Amish community, you can see it. And their sheets is just so pretty and white and clean. And I'm thinking, man, that's what Jesus makes us. They're hanging on them lines with not a wrinkle in the world in them. How in the world they come out of a washing machine? But no wrinkles like they do. That's how we are when we come out of Jesus. We're all wrinkled free. Pure white and all wrinkled free. Nothing to hold us back. We've got everything we need. He gave us everything that we needed. He cleaned us that night at night. But we've let the devil put things in. Whether it be anger. Whether it be greediness, whether it be stubbornness, whether it be, I don't know, honoriness. <laughs> you know, you only you know what you are letting Satan put back inside of you and substance with one of these. He's either taking your love away, putting hate in. Amen. Maybe he's taking the kindness out and putting you, or the 
gentleness out and putting temperance back in. I ain't gentle no more. I mean, and I ain't angry. I want these to flow through me because I want to make heaven my home. Amen. So tonight, if y'all stand, we'll have an altar call. It didn't make no sense to nobody. I got a hold of it. So thank God for that one. But I want these to come out. I want to stay clean before I want to be that, that free bird. At any given moment when Jesus says, are you ready? I can say I'm ready. Let's roll. I won't have to say, uh, wait a minute. You know, you hear that old song, if Jesus come to your house today, what would you say? Would you be able to turn him away? Or would you say, come in? See, if you had to turn him away because there's things in there that you're ashamed of. Amen. So if he called you tonight, would you be able to say, I'm ready, Lord. Let's take this journey. Because I know I've got all this under control. I've not let one thing seep out from the night I got saved. I'm still 100%. If you're 99%, it won't do. We have to be 100% just as that night. And it's not hard because we can go, you can go every minute of the day if you need to. And keep things right between you and him. See, he didn't say that it's so hard that you can never get forgiveness. Or that he would never hear you if you messed up. He didn't say that. It's up to us. It's we that don't want to go back to him. It's we that listen to the devil and say, he don't want you back. You mess up too much. You ain't smart enough. I just told you smart enough ain't going to get you there. You're never going to know all this. So don't even try it. Read and do the best you can, but don't try to cram this. This ain't like a study. And like you're going to have a big test tomorrow and you got to cram. It's not that. Take your time with it. Amen. Don't read book after book to say, hey, I read this book, I read that book. It's not what it's about. You're missing everything that's in here when you run from book to book. Slow down. Read a verse. Read a chapter. Whatever you got to do, just let that soak in. And if you die before you read it all, well, what's the matter? Amen. You don't need it up there no way. You're going to know it. Amen. So if y'all stand, we'll have an altar call. But he is a great God. We should never want to listen to anything the enemy tells us. We've done that long enough, right? I did. For 22 years, I listened to him. And my life was ever so miserable. I was not happy. I didn't have no no joy down on the inside. You going to laugh every now and then on the outside, but not on the inside. I was always searching for something, and I never understood what I was searching for. Until the night that I found Jesus. That's when the search stopped. Amen. And I thank God for that. And I don't want to stop. I want to keep continue searching. Searching out deeper and deeper into Him. Every day you can get a deeper walk. You can get a deeper, deeper with Him. But it's up to you. Amen.